Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So in this tutorial, we are going to talk about securing a data warehouse. In the previous lecture, we have seen what are the different process managers and what are their importance in data warehousing. So now we will discuss how the security plays the role in data warehousing. So the objective of data warehouse is for making the large amount of data easily accessible to the users who are consuming the data. So hence, allowing the users for extracting information about the business is the main task of a data warehouse. But we know that there could be some security restrictions which will be applied on the data and can be an obstacle for accessing the information. So if the data analyst has a restricted view of data, then it is impossible to capture a complete picture of the trend within the business. As you know that the business analyst will need whole information for processing it and analyzing the data to help him capture all the trends which are going on in the business. So the data from each analyst can be summarized and passed on to the management where the different summaries can be aggregated. So as the aggregation of summaries will not be the same as that of the aggregation of the whole data. So it is possible to miss some of the information trend in the data unless we are analyzing the whole data in the data warehouse. So it is very important. So there are some security requirements in the data warehousing that we will discuss now. So adding the security features will affect the performance of data warehouse. So therefore it is important to determine the security requirements as early as possible. So it is difficult to add security features after the data warehouse has gone live. So this process should be going on when we are designing the data warehouse. So during the design phase of the data warehouse, we should keep in mind what data source may be added later and what could be the impact of adding those data sources. So the newly added data sources will also affect the security requirements of a data warehouse. So we should consider these following possibilities during the designing phase. So we should consider some possibilities while designing the data warehouse. Here we have given two situations. The first one is whether the new data sources will require new securities or the audit restrictions to be implemented Otherwise, the new users who are added to the data warehouse who have restricted access to the data which is already generally available. So these two possibilities can be considered while designing the data warehouse. So these situations will arise. Future users and the data sources are not well known. So in this situation, we need to use the knowledge of business and the objective of data warehouse to know these different requirements. So these four activities will get affected by the security requirements and security measures. Those are user access, loading of the data, the data movement and query generation. So these activities will affect when the security will be concerned while designing the data warehouse. So now the next topic we will discuss is user access. So what do you mean by user access? So we need to first classify the data and then classify the users on the basis of the data that they can access. So in other words, the users are classified according to the data they can access. So first one is data classification. So there are some approaches which can be used while classifying the data. First one is the data can be classified according to the sensitivity. So what do you mean by sensitivity? So highly sensitive data will be classified as highly restricted and less sensitive data will be classified as less restrictive. And the second one is data can also be classified according to the job function. So this restriction allows only specific users to view the particular data. So here we will restrict the users to view only the part of data which they are interested and are responsible for. So this is how the data classification works. But there are some issues in the second approach. So to understand, let's consider an example. Suppose we are building a data warehouse for a bank. So consider the data which is being stored in the data warehouse is the transaction data of all the accounts which are present in the bank. So the main question will be who is allowed to see the transaction data. 
so the solution lies within the classifying the data according to the function our next topic is user classification so what do you mean by that so there are some approaches we can use for classifying the users first one is users can be classified as per the hierarchy of the users in an organization that means users can be classified by departments different departments or sections or groups and so on and the other approach is users can also be classified according to their role so with people grouped across the department according to the role with the people grouped across the departments which are based on their roles our next topic in the user access is classification on the basis of department so let's have an example of data warehouse where the users are from the sales and marketing department so we have a security by top down company view so with access centered on the different departments but there could be some restriction on the users at different levels so if the department accesses different data then we should design the security access for each department separately so this can be achieved by departmental data marts so what is data mart that we have seen earlier so since these data marts are separated from the data warehouse we can enforce separate security restrictions on each data mart so this approach is very beneficial for sorting out the data according to the department and the last one is classification which is based on the role so if the data is generally available to all the departments then it is useful to follow the role access hierarchy so in other words if the data is generally accessed by all the departments then we will apply some security restriction as per the role of the user our next topic is audit requirements so this is also a very important topic in the security of the data warehouse so auditing is a subset of security and very costly activity so auditing can cause heavy overheads on the system so to complete an audit in time we require more hardware and therefore it will be recommended that wherever possible auditing should not be covered so audit requirements will be classified in these four categories which are connections disconnections data access and data change so we have to remember one thing clearly for each of these categories it is necessary to audit success and failures and also both so from the perspective of security reasons the auditing of failures are very important so auditing of a failure is very important because they can highlight unauthorized or fraudulent access our next topic is documentation so what do you mean by documentation so the audit and security requirements needs to be properly documented as that will be part of the justification process so this document can contain all the information which is gathered from the data classification user classification different network requirements as well as the data movements and the storage requirements and all the auditable actions so this is very important to get track of while applying the security on a data warehouse and the last but not least the impact of security on the design of data warehouse so the security affects the application code and the development time scales as well as security time scales so the security affects these three main categories which are application development database design and testing so we will discuss them one by one so the first one is application development so the security affects the overall application development and it is also affect the design of important components of data warehouses such as the load manager warehouse manager and the query manager these three topics we have already cover in our previous lectures so the load manager may require checking the code to filter records and place them in the different location so more transformation rules may also be required for hiding the certain data so also there may be requirement of extra metadata to handle any extra objects so to create and maintain the, these extra views the data warehouse manager may require extra codes to enforce the security so extra checks may have to be coded into the data warehouse for preventing it from being fooled into moving data into a location where it should not be available 
So the query manager will require the changes for handling any access restrictions. So this query manager will need to be aware of all the extra views and the different aggregation which are applied on top of it. The next area is database design. So the database layout will be also affected because when the security measures are implemented, there is an increase in number of views and tables. So adding security increases the size of database and hence it increases the complexity of overall database design and managing the data warehouse. So it will also add the complexity for backup management and recovery plan. And the last area is testing. So testing the data warehouse is a very complex and lengthy process. So adding security to the data warehouse will also affect the testing time and complexity. As we have discussed, when we apply the security to, to the data warehouse, the database design gets complex and hard to maintain and backup. So it is directly proportional to it. So as the database design gets complex, the testing process will also get lengthy and complex. So it affects the testing in the two ways. The first one is it will increase the time which is required for integration and system testing. And the second is there is an added functionality to be tested which will increase the size of the testing suite. So these are all about adding a security to a data warehouse. So these points you have to remember very clearly while implementing the security to a data warehouse. So if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. Thanks for watching.